MMA Fight Corner. Joining us on the line right now, fighting for the lightweight title, UFC 164, coming up Labor Day weekend, Anthony Showtime Pettis. Showtime, how you doing today? What's up, man? I'm doing good. Excellent, excellent. So listen, it's been a couple, a strange couple of months. I mean, first you're dropping down to 145, taking on Jose Aldo, and then there's an injury, but then now you're back up to lightweight, taking on a, a person you've already fought in Benson Henderson uh, for the title. Explain how the last few months have been for you. Uh, man, the last couple of months were crazy. Um, you know, going from you know fighting in Brazil at 145 to you know the knee injury putting me sidelined and didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, Josh Thompson, you know, calling me out. All these, uh, all, just didn't really know what was going to happen after that knee injury. And then uh, you know, I get the opportunity to fight in my hometown for the lightweight title. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. So I think everything happens for a reason, and you know, uh, I just gotta get ready for uh, you know my, my time. It's funny because you were supposed to set uh, face Aldo down in Brazil, and one of the things we've realized with the Brazilian cards is that Brazil factor, how the Brazilians have such a hometown advantage. Do you think fighting in your hometown, you're going to have any, does that give you any advantage over Benson? No, I mean, I don't, I don't think so at all. I mean, it doesn't matter where you're fighting, you know, at the end, at the end of the day, you know, when the cage door closes, it's, it's me versus that, that opponent, and our skill sets, are, are, that's all that really matters, I mean. Most guys can block that out very well, and uh, in Brazil, I mean, we don't even know what they're what, what they're saying. So, I mean, we don't know if they're cheering for us or against us. So, it doesn't really have that factor for me. We actually had, uh, you know, someone who's fluent in Portuguese. Uh, you know, you hear that chant all the time. That kind of sounds like "whoomp." There, yeah, it yeah, is. I know, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know what they're saying. Yeah, my uh, my Brazilian juicy coach, you know, told me what, what they were saying. It's pretty brutal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. I mean, but I went to a, actually when I was in Brazil, I went to a soccer game and. Uh, same atmosphere, man, and they get they get up for their sports teams. I mean, it's totally different than you know the, the stage. Yeah, absolute fanatics. Now you're uh, taking on Benson Henderson, a fight that has already happened. It happened in the last WEC. It's probably one of the most famous WEC fights for your Showtime kick. Uh, do you think that ha- already having been in there and and having a victory over him, does that put any uh, advantage in your brain? Uh, you know, it, it's different because I mean. When I fought him, I was I was young. I was a kid, you know. I was only 23 years old, and now I'm 26. And uh, you know, we both matured as fighters and as people. So you can't really say you know, it has an advantage. I mean, he's a champ. I'm sure he's used to the pressure. So I, I don't see that being as an advantage. I mean, it's definitely there, but I wouldn't say it's an advantage. What do you think about Benson as a champion? His style, the fact that he really hasn't finished anybody since he's taken over the reign there. What are your thoughts on that? And are you the man to finish him? Um, uh, my thoughts on that is, you know, you see a lot of champions becoming point fighters. I mean, these guys want to keep their belts. And, uh, I mean, you, there's two there's two sides of that story. I mean, every challenger is very talented. I mean, if you look at the lightweight division, everybody there is very, very well matched. So it's going to take that uh, that, that, that factor to, to change that so, so you can have somebody dominate these fights. And that's what I'm looking to do. I mean, all I can do is go in there, implement my game plan, hope for the best. And with the knee, I know that you had the, you know, that's what kept you out of the Aldo fight. But I was actually watching some videos that you put up on your Twitter, and you look like you're already back to full recovery. Uh, how is the knee? How does it feel? Um, knee feels good. I mean, it, the, the, the injury I had wasn't a, a serious injury. It was more of a, you know, it was an LCL tear. So it's one of the injuries you don't need surgery for, them, but it, it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty bad still. I mean, the, you're limited in your motion, your range of motion. Um, it's, it's the outside of your knee, so it's not as important as, as the ACL. Um, I recovered, uh, you know, pretty quickly. I, I recover pretty fast. I'm still young. I'm in good shape. I take care of my body. I eat well. So uh, recover, recovery, you know, has never been an issue for me. It's just uh, a mental factor now. Uh, can I mentally trust my knee and, you know, go in there with all the confidence I, I usually go into these fights with? And, yeah. uh, you know, with, with a chance at a title shot, you, you can't say no to that. And, of course, like Phil was talking about you being in the hometown and everything, but it's also the Harley-Davidson anniversary that coincides with that. Are you expecting one of those fight weeks that is just, like, all ramped up? And is it is it put a lot of pressure? You're saying you're talking about the mental aspect. Does that add a lot of pressure for you to have to feel like you have to perform in front of your home crowd? Um, not for me. I mean, I've been fighting, uh, you know, I've been doing Taekwondo. I've been doing martial arts boxing since I was a kid. So, I mean, I've been, I've been fighting my hometown, you know, since I was five years old. So, uh, it's not really a lot of pressure. I mean, it's, it's definitely there. I mean, there's more, there's more, uh, there's more people around you and, you know, there's more, you know, influences outside of the, the cage. I mean, you got to deal with a lot more people. But for me, it's just, uh, it's another fight. I mean, it's another fight. It doesn't matter where it's at. Uh, this time it's just for, for the title. 
You know, Anthony, you talk about your age, and, and you are quite young, but you, you, you've you been around, and you have quite a few fights. Um, let's just say apocalypse happens tomorrow, and only a few people survive in this world, and, and people who know who you are, w- what's that one thing you want to be remembered for? I want to be the guy that, uh, you know, goes out there and gives the fan a show. I mean, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. I mean, you know, you got so many fight fans, and you got so many good fighters, but I, I like to be that guy that, you know, fight fans want to watch because they don't know what's going to happen. So I, I, I strive to be that, that, that different fighter, you know, I set, set myself uh, apart from the group. What, what would you say is the highlight of your career, your, your toughest fight? Uh, the toughest fight is probably going to be the Clay Guida fight. Um, you know, like I was coming off, uh, you know, one of the best performances of my life, you know, against Ben Henderson, the showtime kick, you know, moving into the UFC, I was supposed to get a title shot. And then I, I fight a guy like Clay Guida and, you know, he just exposes exposes a hole in my game, and uh, that was probably one of the probably the, one of the toughest and the the biggest parts of my career. That's when I actually decided to become a student of the game and and learn everything I needed to learn to so my my athleticism match my skills. Well, that's an interesting question. Like, what what was it that you learned? I mean, I, I know you learned to complete the game, but what was it that you learned about yourself? Because they say that the that the best thing that could happen to a fighter is a loss because you learn so much. The best thing I learned about myself, man, is I hate to lose. Um, I, I, I hate losing. I hate that feeling, and I, it's something I don't want to feel ever again. And uh, you know, losing to Clay, uh, that was probably one of the down, worst times of my career. And uh, I, I, I never wanted to feel that way again. And I do everything in my training camps and in my power that that never happens again. I think that's why my training camps are are very, uh, you know, cl- I, I get injured a lot because I, I train hard. I mean, I, I don't I don't hold back in training. I don't I don't train. You know. Like like softly, I train I train really to get ready for these fights to finish these fights. I was watching you do some of that circuit training online, man, and you were seriously like everything was into it, 110. percent I didn't see you slowing down one minute. One of the fun things that I did see that you were doing, what uh, that you were actually kicking eggs that were being thrown at you and smashing them into I don't even know what, but I mean it was very flashy. I'd like to know, do, is that something that you just did for fun, or is this something that maybe you actually do because it helps you? In some aspect of training no that was just for fun um, it was like uh it was a uh, it was actually uh a while back it wasn't you know before this last injury um it was a while back and um i think it's rotten tv or something they they uh they film athletes doing you know crazy things and they came up with the idea of me kicking eggs and they use a slow-mo camera and it, it, it looks really cool but uh, that's just for fun i mean it makes it makes a crazy mess and I don't think I could add that to my training. Uh, it, it definitely uh, it helps with your accuracy too. I mean, that, that's pretty impressive kicking eggs like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely hard. I mean, we had to do a couple takes, uh, especially you know you got to have that timing and it has to look good for the camera. So we had to do a couple takes, but uh, it came out pretty good. Uh, one more for me: the Showtime kick that we was heard around the world. Uh, we know that that you said that that was something that you had practiced with, over at uh, Duke Rufus. Uh, is that? Do you have something similar that maybe you're holding on to that you've been practicing along that nature for this fight with Benson? No, I don't. I don't really try to go out there and like have like one specific move that I want to try or that I you know think will look cool or make fans go crazy. Um, I think if you do that, you're limiting yourself and in, in what you can do. So uh, I like to I like to keep everything uh, available. I have a lot of skills. Like a lot, I have a lot of moves that you know the world hasn't seen yet inside the octagon. And uh, you know if I get the opportunity, uh, I'm not afraid to throw them. Well, Anthony, all I got to say is the only way that you're going to top that Showtime kick, in my opinion, is if you do it backwards and land it. It's the only, <laughs> only way it's going to happen. But we thank you for your time. Uh, best of luck, UFC 164, taking on Benson Henderson for the lightweight title in a rematch of probably one of the greatest fights that ever happened. We get to see it again. Uh, best of luck, Anthony. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy the rest of your camp. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.